All right guys, so this video is about uh, blood disorders and the behavioral health pharmacology. So let's see if you can get these questions right. All right guys, so it says, which of the following is the most appropriate next step for the physician? And is it A, explain that their son will die without the procedure and treatment? Is it B, complete the necessary procedure despite the parent's wishes? Is it C, social work consultation to discuss referral for child support services? Is it D, discuss options to manage pain during the procedure? Or is it E, comply with the patient's parents' wishes? So let's see what we got. Um, it says a five-year-old boy with Down syndrome is admitted after a two-month history of fatigue, weakness, and fever. Peripheral blood smears reveal possible acute lymph lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. The recommendation by the physician is for the bone marrow is for bone marrow aspiration to confirm the diagnosis. The boy's parents refuse to consent to the procedure because they feel the invasive test will cause their son too much unnecessary pain symptoms. The physician states that without confirmation of the diagnosis, that their son's treatment may be adversely affected. So, which of the following is the most appropriate next step? Now, guys, on this exam, you're going to see, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of answer choices that you're going to like. But again, they're asking what's the best next step. So again, is it A, explain that their son will die without uh, this procedure? Now, when we think about ALL, for kids, it actually has a pretty decent uh, mortality. There's no such thing as a good mortality rate, but relatively speaking in comparison, you know, for kids, it's roughly 90%. So there's a good outcome with treatment uh, that, the, uh, that a child will survive. Will survive. Now in adults, the five year, and this is based on five, year, five years, I believe, in adults, it's, it's down around three to 40%. Um, so anyways, is it B, complete the necessary procedure despite the, the parent's wishes? Mm, kind of not so much, right? You don't want to do something at this stage. It's not, you know, you could have the argument like, well, heck, it's going to save them. But at this stage, is that the best next step? Is it C, social work consultation to discuss referral for child protection services? Possibly. Is it D, discuss the option to manage the, the pain during the procedure? Okay, possibly as well. Or is it E, comply with parents' wishes to not do anything? Um, so the best next step isn't just to kind of shut the door on the case. And, you know, you could explain that without this they may die, but what would be the next best step? What they're looking for, okay? And I took this one straight from the NBME people for the most part. The next best step is going to be D. Uh, discuss options to manage pain, manage pain during the procedure, right? Because maybe, because they're, what's their main concern? Their main concern is that their son's going to have too much unnecessary pain symptoms. So if you can kind of focus on this piece, maybe they'll kind of understand that, look, we can control the pain. Your main concern is that he's going to be too much in unnecessary pain. They're not saying they don't want the procedure. They're just saying, is it worth getting the test for the next step? So in this situation, the best answer, the only answer is going to be answer choice D, discuss the options to manage patient's pain during the procedure. Now, just as a review, ALL, guys, and you gotta know this, okay? Kinda take a step back, and remember, ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, CD34, right? CD34 comes down, can go left or right, it can go to the myeloid, and this is a stem cell. So it goes to the myeloid or the lymphoblastic, right? And this is the acute, so that's where your AML, and this is gonna be over here, it's gonna be your acute lymphoid or the ALL. Remember, ALL, kids associated with Downs, positive TDT. Make sure you review that video if you don't remember it, okay? TDT in the nucleus, okay? You got the pre-B and the pre-T, right? Pre-B, CD19, CD10, okay? Make sure you know this, guys. You got to have it. But for this question, the only answer is going to be D. Next question says... A 55-year-old 55 55 year old man has difficulty walk, walking approximately one week after starting a medication for intrusive thoughts, comma, paranoid behavior. On examination, he has a somewhat flat affect, which is uncharacteristic of him, according to his family, and some muscle rigidity. He is slow to initiate movement and walks with a shuffling, narrow-based gait. Which of the following medications is the most likely cause of the patient's findings? And guys, this is a pharmacology question, right? They do this a lot to you on the, on the exam. Approximately one week after a medication for paranoid thoughts. So what kind of medications do they usually give for someone who's got intrusive slash paranoid thoughts? This is more of a psychosis, right? And then for psychosis, what do you treat with? Dopamine blockers, right? 
dopamine blockade. Which of the following medications would give you a dopamine blockade? Is it risperdone? Is it a barbiturate? Is it low dose lorazepam? High dose lorazepam? Or monoamine oxidase inhibitor? Well, you ought to know, you would be jumping all over A, risperdone, also known as risperdol. They can give you a first generation, Haldol, uh, Seroquel, Olanzapine. Um, all those are going to be dopamine blockers. Remember, it's dopamine blockers cause, can, can actually cause an impaired gait because what happens when you have too little dopamine? What's the condition that the person might look like? You can have a Parkinsonism, okay? You can have a medication-induced Parkinsonism, which is kind of what we're uh, kind of talking about right here with the narrow-based gait. Now, they could have been uh, even worse to you on this question and said, which of the following medications mechanism of action may cause this? And they could have gave you, you know, a dopamine blocker. Now, what's the mechanism of a barbiturate? That's the chloride, the chloride channel's duration, right? Barbit durit duration. This is the benzodiazepine. What's the mechanism of action? It's the chloride channel frequency, okay? The opening, the frequency. And then remember the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Remember our phenylalanine pathway goes to tyrosine, L-dopa, dopa, dopa uh, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. And remember over here, we went down and we had MAOB, MAOA. And so if we had an M a monoamine oxidase inhibitor blockade, we would have more dopamine or more epinephrine, norepinephrine, and that wouldn't cause a decrease in this uh, difficulty walking, actually kind of go in the opposite direction a little bit. Uh, so the only answer, the correct answer, is gonna be A, Risperdal. You gotta know the medications, you gotta know the mechanism of action. This is kind of a classic question for the step exam. So hope it was helpful, guys.